There was just a study out of the Goldman School for Public Policy at a UC Berkeley on how food policy councils across the state of California are organized. And what it found is they're critically underfunded. Most of them don't even have a single staff person. It's a volunteer effort or part time. For us in Long Beach, we've been very lucky to have two co-directors, myself and Tony D'Amico, working in the system for eight years. We have incredible institutional knowledge and trust both on the community side and the city side to work through issues and connect people together. And we need to advocate that food be a top line issue. It shouldn't be a hidden category which doesn't have a single person working to connect it in an entire county. That's a huge gap that needs to be filled and it's something that the Food Policy Council movement needs to put forth. We've worked on several food policies over the year. Uh, some interesting ones are the Urban Ag Incentive Zone, which takes vacant lots that aren't being used, turns them into urban agriculture sites and gives a tax benefit to the owner. They get taxed at the agricultural rate versus the Southern California residential or commercial rate. Our city actually won an American Planning Association award because we actually fine vacant lot owners for not participating in this program. Furthermore, another policy that we've worked on is the California Homemade Food Act. This allows for food producers to create shelf-stable foods in their home kitchen, like breads, jams, salsas, and go to market or sell them right from there. That policy evolved recently into the Micro Enterprise Home Kitchen Ordinance, which actually allows people to open restaurants in their home. You know, from a placemaking perspective, this ties into the 15 minute city. Why do you have to leave your neighborhood to drive across town to go eat at a restaurant when you have wonderful ethnic food available from your neighbors that also helps them economically rise in their situation?